Hi everyone, welcome back. In the previous video, we talked about how to access the config space registers, right, using the CF8, CFC IO ports or the MM config mechanism, right. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and review that video. Today I'm going to demonstrate how we do a CF8, CFC mechanism. So I have a virtual box, right, under which I'm running DOS. I chose DOS because it gives you a bare metal access to the registers without layers of, you know, OS code in between. So it's pretty straightforward. And I am going to launch Turbo Debugger. So I already have a program loaded in here. So let's walk through what it's going to do, right? So first off, I'm going to switch this to 32-bit registers. And I'm going to prime EAX with this value, right? Which means I'm going to read from bus 0, device 0, function 0, and register 0, okay? And I'm going to prime ECX to 32, which means I'm going to read 32 devices in a loop. So I just put 20 hex, which is 32 decimal. And I'm also going to use EBX register here as a pointer to write to a buffer at DS colon 0. Okay, right here. So what I'm going to do here is scan for all the devices only in bus 0. Okay, if you want to, we can scan all the buses, but to keep it simple, just to demonstrate how to do this, we're just going to scan all the devices that are there in bus 0, right, and then see what they have in there. So let's go back to the code here. So I am at this point writing EAX to DX, and then I am going to read back from CFC, right? We know about it from the previous video. But then when I read back from CFC, I'm going to destroy EAX, right? I want to preserve EAX so that I can reuse it next time I come back in the loop. So I am putting it away in EBP, okay? Then once I read from CFC, I'm checking to see if a device exists or not. If a device doesn't exist, then it's going to return all Fs, okay? So if it returns all Fs, I'm just branching out which means there's no device, I want to go to the next device. Then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to write the value I read into this buffer we talked about, right? Let's go and switch this to um, display as a yeah, D word, so it's easy for us to go and look at it. Okay, once I write the value I read into the first four bytes, first D word, I'm going to increment and point to next D word. And here I'm going to write the value of the bus device function that we read out of here. The first D word is going to show you the value at register zero. And then the second D word is telling you what bus device function you read out of, okay? So then I'm going to point to the next record in here and then restore EAX back. And I'm going to increment EAX to point to the next device under bus zero, right? So if you remember bits 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, these five bits, represent the device number, right? So I'm incrementing bit 11 so that I can go to the next device as I go through this loop. Okay, so then I loop back to the beginning and then I break. So having said that, let's go and run this program, right? So let's make sure the CSIP is set correctly. Let's run this program. Okay, so now we have run this program. Let's look at what it shows in the data area, right? So if you look at this, it is uh, showing that we have a device here. Device ID is 8080, sorry. The vendor ID is 8086 and the device ID is 1237. So, and then we have a device one, same vendor ID 8086, device ID is 7000. Then we go to device two and this is the, the vendor ID and the device ID is BEF. So we have a device three and we also have a device four, right? And pretty much it. So there are no devices after this. So let's see what the device and vendor ID mean. If you go to pci-database.com, um, here you can look at the you know vendor ID device ID to see what it what it is. 80, 86, 1, 2, 3, 7 is a 440 LX EX chipset. Okay. So let's go back to the list here. So we have five devices. How do you know which of them are bridge devices 
versus which of them are endpoint devices right remember if you go back to when you talked about bus enumeration we looked at the config space header right and here we saw that there's a header type field in the config space and that will tell you whether it's a type 0 or type 1 header okay so let's go back here and modify the code a little bit remember we're going to read the header type which is at offset e so since we are reading a d word i'm going to read from offset c which is d word aligned right then you can pick the right byte out of that d word so i'm going to write c in here and then ebx is going to be um, zero i'm going to set ecx to 20 hex which is 32 and i'm going to run it again okay so let's see what happens we read all the devices again right and here we have uh, one bridge device okay rest of all are endpoint devices okay this is how you go and probe for the config space registers okay so today we saw how the cf8 cfc mechanism can be used and we also know that using this mechanism we can only access up to 256 bytes of config space registers per function later on we can look at how to do an mm config based mechanism since this is a 16-bit dos operating system i won't be able to go beyond one megabyte right so maybe i'll try to put some other operating system in here maybe a, a linux variant like ubuntu or something under virtual box and see if we can try to go above uh, one megabyte look at the mm config base using the acpi table and then write or read from the config space okay thanks everybody and see you in the next video